Good morning from Yami B TV. Wishing you all well. Sending love and love to you all as usual. Um, I met a lady earlier on. She was saying some interesting stuff. But we've got to be careful. Um, she's lived a very, very tough life on Yami B TV. We give everybody their day in the sun. And she wanted to talk. And she said a few things, but I believe some of them are true. Forget what I mean. Imagine that. Uh, we're doing it really blind at the moment, but you know, I'm going to have to carry myself proper on this because uh, we've got a duty of care. But trust me, one of the greatest survivors of all time. I'm going to let her have her day in the sun, all right? Morning, Val. You all right, darling? Mm -hmm. All right. Nice to see you. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, let me bring this round here. Oh, God, but everywhere I move these days, there's pain. Right. Lovely, Val. Nice to see you, Angel. And thank you for taking the time out. It's your day today, Val. Don't worry about the camera. You just do your stuff and just be yourself. Mm -hmm. All right, darling? Okay. This will help a lot of people as well. We do it different on the Andy TV. But, um, Val, all right, we'll start from the bottom upwards, right? Because your story. Um, where was you brought up? Charing Cross Road, Leicester Square. Leicester Square, which is the West End. Yeah. Trafalgar Square. We'll start yeah, from though. early home life, mum, dad, siblings. Mum, dad, sis, the brother died of five of measles. Ooh. Sister two years older than me. Yeah. And me. I was the youngest. You was the youngest. And schooling? St. Clementine's Primary School, Drury Lane, just near the Aldwych. Near Aldwych? That's East London? No. no Strand. Strand. Right, right, right. So, um, and how, how was this a little bit of early life background? Um, it was fun because I went to nursery there you went as to well nursery before there I went to well. school there. So yeah. we everyone knew everyone when you started your classes. Yeah. But um, I bumped into my schoolmate a couple of weeks ago on the 91 yeah. bus. She was my best friend at primary school. I hadn't seen her since I was 10 years old. Wow, how many years so late was that? Well, I'm 66 now. So she, she recognised yeah, you? Yeah, I recognised her. And my... My stepbrother is Norwell Roberts, the first black copper to join the force. He lived with us for si 10 years. Hold on a minute. Norwell Roberts. Roberts. He's just written a book. The first black commissioner. Black copper to join the force. Was he a copper or commissioner? Copper. He was a copper. Yeah, he went to, he went to Hendon with Paul Condon. And that's your brother? Yeah. Well, My stepbrother. All right, let's go into that a bit straight, explore that a little bit. Mm. So. He became your brother, how? How did that work out? Well, he, he came met, from a different country. Yeah, through, right? he was from the Caribbean. Yeah. He came over here when he was 17. He was right. homeless for two years. Yeah. And then he joined Hendon Cadet College. Right. He got posted to Bow Street, which was our nearest Nick. Yeah. And racism was rife then. Of course. Absolutely. It's not, He's got to be one of the first. Yeah, he is. He was the first. He was, was the first. Golden bit. So he goes on shift. Yeah. He was 22, and they tipped him on his head to make sure his blood was the same colour. So my dad went mad, he went to Bow Street, he went, right, when you finish your shift, yeah. you get all your stuff out of the section house, and you come and live with us. And he yeah. did. He lived with us till he married Caroline, his first wife. So he actually lived under the same roof as Yeah, you? yeah. Excellent. And then he married Caroline, he became a DCI at Scotland Yard, Yeah. and they're never home. You know, divorcing the force is yeah. really high. Yeah. So they yeah. got divorced. And then he met my friend Wendy, and he's been married for 32 years. And he lives at Wembley now. He's 77. 77. Oh, we would have seen a lot. Yeah. Earliest memories of living with him, kind of man, was... Like... Oh, he was lovely. Yeah. He was lovely. I mean, I used to say... Because my sister was a nightmare. Yeah. Absolutely. She would not conform to anything. Right. And I said to him, No, well, why is Carol so naughty? And he said, Because she is. I said, am I naughty? He went, no, you're not. You're not naughty at all. Carol's naughty. You're not naughty. So, what, but you said, I, I saw you mentioned earlier on about the panda car outside. Oh, yeah. Um, I, see that still. I used to go to the Lyceum when I was yeah. 15. So one night, my dad Lyceum. says to me, right, when you go to Lyceum, darling, you go down Charing Cross Road along the Strand where it's all lit. I said, of course yeah. I do. Yeah. But I used to go to Covent Garden, pick my friend up from that West Bank take her, drop her off. So I'm dropping her off, walking down Henrietta Place, Norwell's in a doorway, so you can't see him, his right. mouth shut. Yeah. He leaps out, and I went, oh, I did he had a heart attack. He went, you've been lying to Daddy. And I went, oh, no, not really. Well, kind of. He went, right, next week, I'm taking him to lie see him in the panda car. I said, no, you're not. You're ruining my street cred. Right. He picked me up. He Ten picked bad. me up from the Lyceum. I've never forgiven him for it. You probably loved it Ever. for it, of course. Oh, in fact, so school, get to the school, because you went to what primary school? 
St. Clementine's in Drury Lane. Clementine's in Drury Lane. Oh. I went to nursery there, so you went to nursery I knew there, everyone. And then you go into the other bit. Into oh, that's how school reception was class, back then. That's, yeah. So what was your early, what did you want to be? Ballerina. School? Ballerina. From day one, ballerina. But I didn't have much classes at school for that kind of stuff. It wasn't educational oh, it wasn't subject. Education I had to go to the um, Pat Britton School of Dancing in Drury oh, Lane for my okay. ballet lessons. I did yeah. ballet, tap, modern jazz. Yeah. Did and that for 15 years. 15 years. So you did, so did you dance anywhere? Yeah, I did auditions, we did shows. Yeah, um, meet anyone along the way? Well, I met them anyway, because my godmother's one of the Kay sisters, so when she used to do um, Sunday night at the Palladium, yeah. the command performance, we used to go there an hour early and meet yeah. everyone that was appearing. Yeah. So we met everyone, Tommy Cooper, everybody. I used to All like that it. era. I used to like it. Who else, how, when you, you, you dancing? Norman done, Wisdom. Norman Wisdom. Beverly Sisters. Everybody in that era, basically. Yeah. Tommy Cooper oh, he was took mum and dad to his house for dinner oh, one night. He yeah. broke three glasses trying to find the right yeah. glass to put me dad's yeah. rum and pep in. Yeah. He, dri- he drives them back two o'clock yeah. in the morning. Copper stops. He went, can you put your lights on? It's two o'clock in the morning, mate. He went, oh, sorry, officer. He went, are you licensed? He said, yeah, do you want a gin and tonic? Right, no. He was the he was, he was the only man I ever knew that was acting silly, but... Made oh. everyone laugh. Well, he wanted to be a serious magician. Did he? But because his first act, oh, he, was a he kept lunatic. messing it up. He was my dad's favourite. Yeah. He was, Tommy Cooper. Well, my, my godmother lived in Brighton, so he used to spend a lot of time in Brighton. Gosh, yeah. And um, my godfather was a comedian. Yeah. And he used to earn £200 a week post-war. Yeah. But when he yeah. met my godmother, he yeah. became her agent. Yeah. So he gave up the comedy. Right. But ev- everyone knew him in Hove in Brighton. He was so well respected, so generous, such a generous yeah. man. Yeah. I was in casinos when I was at nine I years lo- old. I loved him when I was at school. Yeah. Everyone thought, everyone used to try to take off him. Well, everyone and, um, thought he was acting when he had the heart attack at the Palladium. We were at the Palladium when it happened. When it happened, yeah. And everyone yeah. thought it was part of the act. Andy? Sorry about the noise, you know. It's the only way that I could have, I could have done it, but story is so important. Oh, so the ballerina, um, 18, 18 years, 15 years, mm. doing dancing. Clemendale, you went to, um, you went to, um, I've chosen a rock venue here, and I guess not going to put me on. We went to secondary school. Yeah, Grey Coat Grammar School, Westminster. Grey Coat Grammar School, right. Um, did you pass an exam? I've got three O-levels. Right. And French, then, geography and needlework. So when you left um, grammar school, yeah. you went, went to work where? Um, I did three auditions, first of all. Yeah. But I couldn't get them because I didn't have the right equity card. Gotcha. So mum said to me, you better get a job. So I went down the Acme Agency in Oxford Surface Station. I got yeah. a, te- a buyer's clerk job at Devon Central Buying Office. I stayed there 16 years. And that, that, what kind of work's that now? Well, we had 84 stores, so we used to supply the oh, 84 okay. stores. Okay, okay. And then yeah. um, I left to have Matthew 16 years later. You got married? I got married when I was 23. Right, and you had one boy? Yeah, eight years later. Um, what was I going to say? So... Did you stay in England? Did you stay in the East End? Did you stay in England? Well, like, my first flat I bought when I was 20 was a one-bed flat in Chelsea, just in off Chelsea. Sydney Street. Gordon, you was living the life of Riley. So then uh, two years later, I met my husband. Then yeah. we got married. And then eight years later, we had Matthew. Yeah. And then we sold that and moved into a two-bed in the same block. Yeah. And my neighbours still live there now. Right. I've known them years. I love it. So did you any other work after that? Um, no, Debenhams. And then he wanted to go to Australia. So we went to Australia, I worked for a Hearns out there because they don't have multiple stores, they're all independent right. stores. Yeah. So I worked for a Hearns doing the same thing as I did at Devon's. Yeah. Bought a house and then he retired for 13 months and I thought game over. So we came back, he came back with us, no, no issues. Yeah. And I stayed with Dad in Hatton Garden for three years, put Matthew in City Child Nursery yeah. and worked for British Gas for five five years in Holborn in Holborn so that was after you came back from Australia yeah Yeah. didn't like over there though I just I couldn't keep two kids on one income do you know what I mean you know you can't Matthew would have missed out on so much you know and I thought I just can't do this so he came back with he came back with us he lived with us for a little while yeah and um, he then rented a room in Elton where he was from he was from Elton South East London And then um, used to see Matthew every other weekend, no issues yeah. at all. Took yeah. him on holiday, and then um, he went back to Australia when Matt was seven. Yeah. Matt's thirty-five now, but he talks to him on WhatsApp three right. times a week. They're right. all in touch all the time. But he, he rings me twice a week from Australia, oh, Thursdays and Sundays. Oh, okay. um, 
Yeah, they've got no issue. I mean, I'm not in love with him, but I love him. I love him like a yeah, brother. Yeah, he's a first. Do you know what I mean? He's, he's the first man I ever... Oi, Val, so you've never been into criminality, have you? No, nothing, no. All right, so in them days, because your mum and dad, yeah, yeah. everyone yeah, came yeah, from yeah. that, especially having normal um, as your yeah. brother, really, yeah. in reality, the documents, family. Um, yeah. Round about the time, the craze, everyone was around, the Richardsons. Yeah. Others were around it. But they just they just protected their own. Do you know what I mean? They they, they didn't cause trouble with people they didn't know. No. They just sorted out people that hurt the people close to them. Yeah. You know? So they were to you, mum, dad, everybody kinda of liked. They were the just place. our friends. You know, uh, yeah. oh, like uncles where they used to pop round, have a cup yeah. of tea, have a yeah. like you do, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mum and dad would go and have a pint with them, they go to their parties. Yeah. You know, with um well, I me and Dino swear that his parents and my parents parted together. Who's Dino then? He's Dino Lacey. He was brought up in Tottenham. And who's he with Richardson. Richardson. He's just he's just a friend. Oh, he's just a friend. Yeah. He lives in Elmfield now. But he was part of the Richardsons? No. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he's yeah. family. Yeah. Everyone okay. knows the Laces in Tottenham. Oh, the Laces. They're very right. very popular people. Right. For um, the right and wrong reasons. <laughs> yeah. So when you started you started going clubbing, doing doing stuff. Yeah. Club, what club, what clubs, clubs were around at that time? I used to go to the Lyceum. Lyceum. On a Thursday. Yeah. And I used to pick me friend up from that West Bank. Yeah. And drop her home. Yeah. And this night I dropped her home and Norwell was in the doorway with his mouth shut so you couldn't see him. Yeah. So he leaps out and I went, oh! And then he came me up on the He went, you've been lying to daddy, haven't you? I went, yeah. well, no, not really. Well, kind of. Well, I'm taking this to Lyceum in my panda car next week. I said, no, you're not, because you're ruining my street crit, right? right? But he picked me up. Yeah. And I've never forgiven him for it. Yeah, I think you said that. Yeah, I think oh, you sorry. Love, you're loving me. Yeah. Don't worry about that. That's a loud bell. <laughs> I do so he's time. 77 now. He's yeah. just written a book. Yeah, he's 77 now. And he lives and in he contacts with him. He, he texts me every day. Yeah. Very polite. Now, do you remember drawing out any experiences, kind of things you had to suffer as being the first black policeman to come over here? Um, he had a really bad childhood. bad childhood. He was very close to his grandparents in the okay. Caribbean. Yeah. But he yeah. wasn't allowed to play with any other kids. Yeah. And if he was naughty, yeah. his mum would make him wear her clothes. So it was kind of yeah. not hitting, but mental yeah. abuse. Yeah, more what, than that. In the Caribbean? Yeah. What, what part of the Caribbean? Um, remember, St. Lucia, Grenada, Jamaica. Dominica, Barbados. Jamaica. Jamaica. All right. But yeah, he's booked so, book, yeah. books out now, he's got stories yeah. to tell, isn't he? Oh, yeah. Ask him one day if he wouldn't mind coming on my show. Yeah. Oh, no, he will. He does a lot of interviews. Does he? Yeah. Oh, that's good. He goes around a lot of the I'm schools, colleges, he does all that sort of thing. Give a little word. I'll, I'll give my number after. Yeah. You can um, ask him oh, to yeah, be happy TV. to do it. We cater for everybody on my show. Because when the police leave the force, they join the Freemasons. And he does a lot of work for the Freemasons. Why you not been telling me this way? I don't store things well these days. Is that how the Freemasons? How does that work again, Dale? They're they're, ma they're, mainly they're mainly ex coppers. Mainly ex coppers. It's it's like how do some villains do they say they're Freemasons? Are they? Because they're attached. Because it doesn't to matter because they're attached to it. It's like when you, when it, when you, years ago when oh, you left the army, gotcha. you went into security or yeah. you joined the force. So all my dad my dad was a grenadier guard. So all his mates when they left the, the Is army. I've learned something here. They, they all became coppers, so some of them worked at Snow, Snow Hill, yeah. which is now closed, right. and some of them were at Scotland Yard, yeah. like Pop and Tony Poppin was DCI at Scotland Yard, oh. so they all know one another, gotcha. but well, they explained. always join the Freemasons, oh, right. and uh, it's a club really, but um, you they do a lot, no, they do a lot of work though, I mean, with all this Covid and everything, yeah. Um, Norwell's had a lot of deaths and bereavements. Yeah. So yeah. he's had to obviously organise funerals yeah. and then he, day to day, he makes sure yeah. that they're okay, he takes okay. food round to them, Good just man. generally looks after them, you right. know. Right. So he's, I mean, I haven't seen him for ages. No. And I, I texted him and I said, a meeting with the Pope would be easier. Yeah. Wow. And he went, what do you mean a meeting with But well, he's always in touch. I said, well, I can't bloody see you. Yeah. He said, well, I'm busy. I said, yeah, so am I. <laughs> so Val, you know, um, you know, there's all the sad bits when, you know, we get to the grand old age, life can never be um, that kind of smooth without bumps along the way. No. I mean, obviously, I um, haven't spoken to you this morning for a little bit before uh, I've got some breakfast now. 
the bumps on the road. When did he really, do you reckon, start to go a little bit wrong for him with um, health, streets? Oh, no, I got married. Yeah, no, I got married. I stayed on my own with Matthew. Yeah. Um, he was the priority when I got divorced, and the thing yeah. is, I was working full time anyway. Up until what age now? Until 2001, when I got made redundant. Um, but I've always done things, like I've just passed my paralegal exam, so I'm yeah. representing people in court at the moment. I've just done three people. Yeah. £19 an hour, my child. Yeah! You didn't know about all this, yeah. much of the to the Oi, Oi, Val, so I don't fucking great, it's great, and what it's just better health than what I thought. Um, Val, so when would you? When did your rough the rough patch? Because I've been mean, you've had some real. Um, when I was talking to you, I really was taken in by you. You've been arrested a few times. There's family yeah, problems. Yeah, when I um, you said you got mugged. I wasn't too happy about no. that. You know what I mean? Well, and I was I, saying she got you worrying me a little bit, but you know, it's the kind of things that you've been experiencing for a little way. I know you joke around mm. a lot, but you know, I found it quite. Um, well, when I moved to Potter's Bar. Um, I had to look after my nephew for seven years to stop him being put into care because my right. sister f messed right. up. Yeah. So I looked after him and Matthew, but my dad was alive then. So it, even though I worked in uh, British Gas, yeah. my dad would pick them up from school yeah. and be there. It, Matt yeah. was never on his own, neither was Kieran. Yeah. And then um, when he started secondary, I sold stores where he moved to the masonette. I did night shift at a hotel. Yeah five nights a week, 11 till 7 in the morning. Yeah. My dad used to come over of a night, stay the night, because my dad worked in the Diamond Bolts, security guard. Yeah. So he'd stay overnight and then go back in the morning to work so that someone was with Matthew while I was on night shift. But it worked okay, because I'd read him a story, put him to bed, and then yeah. when he woke up, I was back home. So he didn't even know I weren't there. Right. It was really good, night auditing. So it fitted in? It fitted in with what I was doing, yeah. And then... And then um, uh, 01, I had a non fault car accident. Yeah. And at 02, yeah. I was diagnosed with MS because right. I've got really bad lip wear, lip whiplash, yeah. and that brought on the MS. Right. So I've had that, but I've been stable since 09 because I've done 15 years of ballet, so I'm not on any medication right, so or anything like that. So because um, I lost my job in 01. Yeah. Um, no, I didn't. I, no, I lost my job in 04, because I bought yeah. the house in 03, March 03. Lost my job in 04, but I had all the mortgage protection and everything. And then um, I didn't realise that I could have got my interest paid on the mortgage. My, my mortgage was a repayment mortgage, yeah. £52 yeah. I had on it. Yeah. Um, so I was two months in arrears, £700. And yeah. the Halifax repossessed me illegally. Right. Sold it to a Turkish outfit. Yeah. 60 grand under value. Yeah. So I went to the Ombudsman, went to the FCA. My barrister said, you don't need me, do it yourself. Yeah. It's so appalling, the outcome will be the same. But she yeah. also found out, which I wouldn't be privy to, that in 09, Halifax sold my deeds to four companies in the Far East. I've never had the original deeds to my house. So you, are you taking them to court? Yeah, they're in the court now. And what about, you've been arrested a couple of times at this family dispute? Oh yeah, then, because um, I was so, we stayed in a hotel for six years, and that was paid for by me, Matthew and my ex-husband, Yeah. and then it got just out of hand, 650 grand's worth of hotel bills, so I said, it's got to stop now, Matt. He said, don't worry, Mum, he said, I can sofa, sir, because we've lived here 31 years, so yeah. he knows, every, everyone knows him, he knows everyone, I know everyone. Yeah. So we sofa surfed, and I was staying with this guy up near the station, um, he was, um, type 1 diabetic alcoholic yeah. which I didn't know to start with and um, he came down the pub one day and said that my brother deserved to die of measles at 5 and my mum and dad were cut to see you next Tuesday so I called the police they came, they arrested me put me in a cell for 12 hours interviewed me the next day, I said why well, have I been arrested well you swore at the copper, I said no I didn't I don't swear at people and I don't tell lies yeah. It was proven on cam call that I didn't swear at the copper. Yeah. So they arrested me for violence and threatening behaviour. So I said, are you for real? I'm 63, I've got MS, sciatica, arthritis in my ankles and my hips. What threat am I to a six foot one copper? And by the way, he fractured my knee and pelvis last night. Then they took my phone for nearly three years. Wouldn't give it back despite a high court order. Is he out of now or what? Who, the... The kids who are staying there? No, he's still in the flat. He's still in the flat? Yeah. He's got a goal, hasn't he? No, he's renting it. He's renting it? Yeah. Because his mother died 
and he sold the family home up up the road. Yeah. He had three hundred fifty grand in his pocket. Right. So he's rented in the flat where he is now. He's got loads of money. Oh. He's sixty something. He's a bit older than me. I think he's about sixty nine. It's it's about when the Marines. Oh yeah, Um, because I go to London quite a lot. I stay at the Premier Inn, or I stay with my mate David St Pancras. There was three Royal Marines, and they've been homeless for two years in the Strand. And I thought this ain't good enough. So because I went to Brown as a guy, St Martin's in the fields, I know St Mungo's there. So I went over there and I said, right, this is a situation. This is outrageous. They need to be housed. She said we didn't know about that. I said, well, they don't know about you. Yeah. So I'm telling you, you tell them. they need to be housed. I 100%. said, they're okay. I yeah. said, I feed them all the time, yeah. make sure they've got fags, a drink, they're warm. Yeah. Within two weeks, Peter got housed in Newcastle where he wanted to live, yeah. in a one-bed flat. The other Pete got housed at Wembley where right. he wanted to live. Yeah. And the third Pete got housed at London Bridge where he wanted to live. Within two weeks of speaking so to them. it worked out well for So they're really happy really happy the yeah. only thing is Pete in Newcastle hasn't got a phone so I can't get hold of him but there you go yeah but you've done Such the duty you've done yeah. the duty you okay. I couldn't be having God it God probably looks out for you as well I you couldn't know, be though. having it do you know that don't have them um, too many people taking liberties on them ponces oh they that, do all they? the time yeah. that's why I end up smacking them in the mouth because I heard you could have a right round oh yeah you wouldn't do me though no <laughs> you would no she does have a go though and well when you're getting mugged you're not going to buy him a pint are you no no you're going to lay it out. Definitely. I've laid six people Foul out. Foul dunker. And they never got a paramedic job. Yeah, but Val, try not to go down to that bar. Man. It's what my dad taught me. I know, he was strong, wasn't he? In the Adam Lackle, Bish Bosh, oh, Kapow. Oh, it always works. Mm, mm, mm. When oh, I got mugged two oh, weeks ago. Oh, 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 oh. Val, don't you do that. You've got to stay away He bit that. my cheek yeah, and left three holes in my cheek. Oh. So the police came within six minutes, bless them. What did they do? And I, I banged him out before they got there. Oh, oh. And then his, his assailant took my phone, but he didn't. He walked. He didn't want to draw attention to himself. So yeah, I said to the cops, go and get the phone off at him, which they did. You've got to be careful on them streets, don't you? And it's a Wood Green police station, but I'm having trouble getting back my phone because the officer oh. that's supposed to be in charge doesn't exist at Wood Green police station. Call them, Penny. Got be, oh, please do me be careful in the streets. But I'm street tough wise. Yeah, you're street wise, but it's not, it's not a place to be no more. It's ugly, ugly people around. Listen, don't. every story with UCH has a funny side to it, right? I know, I know. Because since yeah. they fractured You've my knee and pelvis, I've been in hospital 45 times since the middle of November for blood clots. Right? True survivor, yeah. So, when I last went, they discharged me earlier. I said, I can't walk. What are you discharging me for? Well, we need the bed. I went, fair enough. Well, it's it's it. I walked to my friends. Yeah. I fell outside the pool and hotel, broke my yeah. nose and broke my wrist. I was back in the hospital half hour later. I went, I told you not to discharge me. How long ago was all this now? Three weeks ago. Pissing out. No, 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 sorry, two months ago. Two months ago. Yeah. So then, yeah. I go in and... The doctor that's doing me this looks like Prince Harry. So I went, here, yeah, listen, is your wife as good looking as Meghan? And he went, she's better looking than Meghan, she's my wife. I went, I thought you'd say that. He went, now here's the deal there. We don't think we've aligned the bones properly. We might have to break it and reset it. I said, well, here's the deal. It's non-negotiable. Hell can freeze over. You are not resetting my wrist, right? Forget it. So I went back six weeks later and it had healed. I've got my nose re and reset, but I can't be bothered. Don't look too bad, though. I know it's there, though. Do you know what I mean? It's so like if you've got a boil on your nose. Me? I look after myself. So, I go and get food for Dave. I'm staying at Dave's. He lives in Charlton Road, just opposite the British Library. So when I got me some food and some papers, and my pelvis locked, and I can't, when it locks, I can't walk. So I sat down. It's one o'clock in the morning. And these two coppers come up. They went, are you loitering? I went, am I loitering? I can't bloody walk, mate. I said, I called an ambulance. He said, we'll wait with you for the ambulance. I said, no, it might be two hours. I said, you've got a police London. He went, no, we'll wait with you because you're an old lady. I said, I beg your pardon. I went, how old do you think I am? I oh, know, you nearly cracked me this he morning. Said 50. When I, I said to someone, yeah, I'm just going to there's an old lady. She goes, I ain't old. 
Are you talking to? I said, how do I look? He went 50. I said, I'm 65. I said, I'm old enough to be your grandmother, mate. You know, he said, no, we'll wait with you. Anyway, 10 minutes, the ambulance came. As I'm getting in the ambulance, this car pulls up the side of the ambulance and a van goes in the back of the car. The guy's got whiplash. He's screaming his head off. So I said to the paramedic, get him in the ambulance. Don't call another ambulance. You're as stretched as it is. Get him in the ambulance. I'm sitting on the seat with the seatbelt. So he come in the ambulance, so we got to the UCH, Dr Andrews on, he went, well, how come you come with him? I said, well, he's been hit by, by a van. I said, he's in terrible pain, you know. I said, don't, don't separate us. I said, because I've got to keep an eye on him all night, because he's, he's in terrible pain, Dr good, Andrews. Good and he puts next to each other in the cubicle. He said, well, it's a laugh a minute when you come in here. Okay. That's why I say you're an inspiration. I said, well, I, I can't help you. it. I've only you a little while. Good and bad. Oh, you've found some... Back then, now, change, people, uh, very different cultures. I mean, well, Gerard the old Street, gangster. that's China, Chinatown now, was yeah. all English all when English. I lived there. Yeah. That was all English, greengrocers, you know, your old shops yeah, yeah, like old Berwick shop. Market. We used to go Berwick Market shopping on the Saturday, yeah. get all our veg. My dad was a butcher, so we never paid for meat. But no. we used to get all the veg in there. So, we, um, so basically, we, these criminals back in the day, they, well, really, it was always. It, it wasn't. It wasn't. It's not, it wasn't. It wasn't mega stuff. Do you know what no. I mean? Just somebody having more of a say, yeah. and they always. It was mega stuff at the time, really. but when you look back, yeah. with what's happening now, now, no it, control. It's bloody comedy stuff. Do so you know what I mean? no, back then there was some kind of control yeah. in the neighbourhood. Yeah, and the police. The police used to cover things up as well. You know, they would have the, the horse's mouth. Yeah. Some, that's weird, but it's that's nothing about... major, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So right, you're no. better with the police and the you old know, boy, you can look after the mums and kids. And the thing is, here, what's happened is, here, is, what's happened is now, the police have got to be accountable yeah. now, whereas yeah. that they hide things on that. It's like why the commissioner left, you know, that bloke that set fire to that burn every forest and raped her. Right. He used his warrant card to get her in her, his car. I just been playing cases like that. And the like commissioner, that, you know. he was known with his mates as the rapist. He, he, I right. did a piece on him and she on my reckoned, channel. She reckoned she didn't know anything about it, the commissioner. That's why she resigned. Is she it? knew about it. Of course she knew about it. But she ain't bothered. She's got 150 grand a year fucking pension. She ain't bothered about it. So, and yet the cover-ups have been cover coming out. And now. the trouble is, the majority, like everything, yeah. spoil it. The minority spoil it for the majority. The police, overall, Met Police and City of London Police are good people. Yeah. And my, my brother said to me one day, I joined, people join a, a career for two reasons now. I went, why is that? He said, they join a career because they want a career, or they join a career because they care. Yeah. I joined Met Police because I cared. And that's like our beat pots here. They're yeah. all PCSOs, right? Yeah. And it's a thing in the force. If yeah. you're a PCSO, you're down the bottom of the pile. Yeah. So Hatfield and Borenwood won't talk to them because they're not proper. They don't consider them proper police officers because they can't arrest. But they are the most lovely people I've known in 31 years. Serious about Nine of them. They are absolute. I'd do anything for them. Yeah. Absolutely anything. I'll but Hatfield, I wouldn't piss on them if they were on the fire. That's all the fucking piss. Are you going to? A guy in Portsmouth. Like police station he, he got done three months ago for raping a girl three rapes on duty right he got suspended oh. guess where they posted him where Hatfield police station why did he just wait for the cat to put him somewhere else well like? they be suspended him there's a lot of them getting and re-employed him at Hatfield police station we were saying the other day right now that that copper that you're talking about, he's just gone to prison, right? He's got like loads of years for those rapes and yeah. controlling, abusing um, his position of, of, of power by going, you know, taking liberties with vulnerable yeah. ladies and that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I found it difficult to believe that inside of that station, how would you not know that he was doing it? Yeah. Damn, someone's got to know. You can't have a hundred crimes, millions of crimes. And who doesn't know? You got she know. reckons she didn't know, and that's what, and that's why she resigned. Right, yeah, so she because she's lying. To face the music. So that the police, the police aren't. They are so restricted with what they can say, what they, they got, can do. They have to cover up this bit and that bit. Yeah. Only when they, they saw them, then they They're start just, paying. You know, I was in Barnet Gosh, General Christmas Day, right? And this yeah. guy comes in in handcuffs with yeah. two Met Police. Yeah. He's off the radar, right? Yeah. Yeah. He's banging his head against the wall, and I had to go past him to get a blood test. Right? Gosh, he leaned over and he went, "You're a bit of a slag, aren't you?" I went, "Excuse yeah. me." He went, oh, what's he said? 
I hope you die cancer. Yeah. I got hold of his throat, I banged it against the wall, went, here's the deal, mate. You carry on and you'll be on the fucking floor, mate, and you're in the right department, A&E, because you will not be breathing. Right? It couldn't have been well. Right? He said, I bet you're a grass. I said, me oh, and my right. son are a grass. And do you know why we're a grass? I said, because grasses like us keep scum like you off the streets right. and give the police a chance yeah. to do proper policing. Yeah. The copper said to me, we can't say that, but I said, that's why I said it for you. Mm. That's why I said it for you. I said, no, fuck off. You. We'll see, see you next Tuesday. Wow. Excellent, excellent. I'm glad I'm doing this. And that's what it's like. They're faced with it all the time. Yeah. You know, I come out of King's Cross when we were playing Scotland and this bird's yeah. laying into these two coppers. Yeah, what yeah. do you do on your shift all day? You don't do it at all. Yeah. They're only like 24, 25, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I tapped her on the shoulder. Yeah. I said, why don't, you, why don't you shut the fuck up? I said, if you've got a problem, speak to the Mayor of London and get them to give them more resources. Yeah. Otherwise, fuck off. Yeah. And she fucked off. So Val, you, we we'll talk more about you. I mean, so after all that, it's a lifetime of going through what you've been going through, right? It's a, you know, inspiration that you're still standing. You can talk to me today uh, for half an hour. You know, I, I'll probably see you. I come down to this area quite a lot uh, sometimes, right? So I'll always pop by, making sure that you're all right. Um, but where, if you got yourself today, Val, where would you, are you, where would you like to be? So, there's no help for you whatsoever. No, you I just want to be it. back in my house. You just want to be back yeah. in your house. I'm going back in today, I'm drilling a lot today. Yeah. Yeah. And then, because half my life's in London, because yeah. I've got my childhood, half my yeah. life is here. Yeah. So when I'm in the court doing work, yeah. legal work, yeah. I stay at the Premier, right. and I see all my mates in London, yeah. and then when I'm not doing it, yeah. I'm, I'm down here, because I only want to do three days a week yeah. on the legal stuff, because yeah. I've got MS and I can't travel well, to London. Mate. So I'm going to do three, years, um, three days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday at home, yeah. and then Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday off. Yeah. And I've got to go to Stamford Bridge, and I ain't been up to Stamford Bridge for 18 months. I stayed when I was a little boy. Oh, Chelsea. Chelsea, the bridge, the shed, isn't it? The shed. Well, look, I remember Babsy, to... the one armed geezer, he used to be the kid, he used to. I thought Babsy was black, you know. So go in there and do the shed. Was he white or black? I can't remember. But I knew it was something in front of his hand or something like that. Um, ah, the old days, eh? I used to go to Queensway Ice Cream, and I went. Queensway Ice Cream, I was in the children's around the corner from there when I was little. That's I, what went, I, was I went to my ballet started. lesson one day with my ice boots, and my ballet teacher said to me, Do you want to be a skater or a ballerina? You yeah. can't be both. So I had to throw my skate boots away, carry on with the ballet. What was the worst thing you saw criminally when you was, you know, in the 60s and 70s? And... Well, Dad never talked about anyone he sorted out, yeah. it was never discussed. But we had a vague. Was he known? So he was known? Yeah. yeah. Dad. Reggie. Reggie Winkup. Reggie, Reggie, yeah. But we had a vagrant. Did he go to prison now? No. 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 So he swerved it. Yeah. Um, we had a vagrant called Michael, and he was actually from a very wealthy <laughs> background, and his yeah. mum died, and she had a mansion yeah. in, um, I think it was Hampstead. Yeah. And he wouldn't live there. No. He lived on the streets. Mm -hmm. Right. And everyone knew him. Yeah. And I was only about eight, and I'm walking up the road, and he, he'd come out on you like that. Yeah. And I'd say to him, Michael, will you just behave for once? But he used to do it, so the police nicked him, de loused him, and gave him dinner in the cell. <coughs> and they say, Michael, you've got to stop doing this. We can't keep de lousing you and feeding you. Yeah. He went, oh, but he used to do it deliberately. I used to see him. He's well known on the street. streets. Yeah. I was like, That's what I was born in, I about a bug road. Yeah. He's not around today, is he? No. Uh, but it is what it is. I mean, even now in London, you're going to get you're going to get more druggies. You're going to get more homeless. It's, it comes with a turf. Yeah. We really cared more back then than now. Well, nobody else saw them, did they? No. You wouldn't really. You'd always get. It's easy to get housed as well back then. Yeah. Yeah. But nobody yeah. else saw them. No. You look, if you don't see your neighbour for a day, you go check them out. No. Mum worked full time. She worked for a GPO in Tottenham Court Road. My dad was a butcher. Yeah. And we had a key on the end of the road, so he didn't get locked out. A bit of my child, you never had to bit. worry in the school holidays. No, no one did nothing to their neighbours no, today, though. No, I used never to clean all the windows. Never shoot them around the doorstep. No. Fans, mate, fans. Nobody would. 
But even, I've got, I've got to say, Potter's Bar, I'm so glad I moved it's nice here. Because right yeah. when I moved to Salisbury Coast, it was yeah. a cul-de-sac. Yeah. And Matthew could have a proper childhood, playing in the street, yeah. playing well, in the park. Yeah, so you know, the normal generation things that I had. Yeah, I wouldn't want my kids growing up in London if I was starting again. No. Or none if I had kids. But it's amazing how many kids, yeah. even now, walk to school on their own in London. Yeah. They'd be three or four-handed. That couldn't happen when we... No. no. It's, it's still, I, I think with London, to be no. fair, yeah. no. if you're homeless, you'll never starve, you'll no. never get cold, no. ever. No. And I think that's a, that's a real big deal. Yeah. I'll make you right. So, all right, Val, so it's been great talking to you. I might, when my thing starts to get a bit big, I might even get you on the show with I mean, all your race group and have a panel there talking about. Well, I bought 10 books because everyone wants yeah. them when they see it, they want to read it. So I've had to buy another 10 for our beat cops because they want a copy of yeah. it. So I'll give you a copy when I, when I get yeah. it. I've had to wait two months because it's sold out. Yeah, Val. Sold out. So you haven't worked with that. Um, Norval. Norwell. His, Norwell yeah. Roberts. He texted me. What's his name, Norwell? Roberts. Rob, oh, yeah, Norwell Roberts. He texted Roberts. me today. He yeah, said, I hope, it's, I hope it's not a drama at your house today. Right. I went, I don't do drama, Norwell. Listen, Val, I'd like to just say, don't worry, don't worry about that, Val. We believe you. I'm better than I thought, people. Right? We're lovely, Val. Val, come face this way. Right? Yeah, that's Norwell, Good day, yes. Wow. That's deep. That's mad, that is. I remember, so remember, say, so Yami BTV, you're on Yami BTV, you've had your day in the sun, which you fully deserve, Val. <laughs> and um, yeah, as far as I'm concerned, you do that. You do. You, you think you, you, you're an inspiration. You're still standing, and you're still upbeat, and you're still looking yeah. like. You know what I mean? When I spoke to you this morning, I thought you had more significant points, but not the way you just come across there. I thought you come across proper eloquently, better than me. So um, I'm proud of you, Val. I'm coming out, darling. Okay, right, nice right, darling. You two and um. I'm MBTV. always around anyway. Um, I'm not hard to find. We always. No, all right, Val. Yeah, I remember this cafe. I'm as well. always here. But um. All that kind of stuff is going to be coming regular on the Yami TV. We cater for all age groups and um, all stories. Geriatric. Like always, <laughs> geriatric, but trust me, but she could have a right row. Right, I'll be up later on. Oh, God. Oh, I love right, it. Behave. Behave out.